We're pleased to be joined via telephone from Washington by United States Senator Ron Johnson. The Wisconsin Republican chairs the Senate Homeland Security Committee, so he had the gavel as his committee sought answers on visas and the visa waiver program. Ron, after that hearing, and specifically after that answer, uh, did that satisfy you or did it just create more questions? Well, first of all, hello, J.D. JD and hello, Miranda. Uh, There are an awful lot of questions uh, that we need answers to. Uh, The fact is we'll never have perfect information. Uh, The the fact is is that uh, we we are searching for needles in a haystack, and the problem is there are more needles and the haystack is growing, which is what is disturbing about President Obama's continuing denying of reality that his strategy isn't working to defeat ISIS, which is, I think, the number one objective we really need to accomplish is, is we do need to accomplish his stated goal, degrade and ultimately defeat ISIS. The problem is his vision of ultimately is a lot further in the future than my vision. Senator, uh, we had Dr. Zudi Jazzer, a leader in the Muslim reform community, on the program last night, and J.D. asked him about whether we should be taking a pause on immigration. Absolutely. The timeout is for all immigration. Because, by the way, strategically, it's not just Muslims that are the problem. You have two enemies in Syria. One is the Essidists, who are Muslim mostly, but there's also many operatives of the Ba'ath regime, which are working with Russia, working with Iran. We just had somebody uh, sanctioned who was a non-Muslim by the U.S. Treasury for funneling and paying for oil from Syria. So it really is strategically wrong. But ultimately, somebody who's trying to be commander-in-chief needs to lead and educate America, not just pander. Senator, so should that include a halt on visas? Well, from my standpoint, I want to make sure the vetting process is complete. And when, when I take a look, and, we, and we've held 13 hearings on border security, when I take a look at the different threats, whether it comes from a refugee program, whether it comes from the visa waiver program, or whether it comes from the threats, the risk we have in terms of our completely unsecure border, I look at the fact that our border is not secure. I, I look at the fact that if determined terrorists want to come in this country, the, I'd say the easiest way to do it is to travel into a South American or Central American country or now potentially into Canada with the new after the election and come through our poorest borders. I don't want to be given terrorist advice, but there, you know, it's our lack of border security that, to me, creates our greatest vulnerability. And yet, Ron, we hear from the open borders acolytes, certainly some of my fellow Republicans from Arizona, always talking about the visa situation where people come and overstay their visas. So let me ask you this, whether it's the terror couple in California or the answer we heard from uh, the gentleman from the Department of State in front of your committee today, is the current vetting process for visas, for all intents and purposes, a joke? No, I would not call it a joke, but the fact of the matter is is there are real gaps in information, and, and J.D., there always will be. I, I would argue the visa waiver program, uh, and we had a witness say that it was really misnamed, it doesn't waive requirements in terms of security, though that visa waiver program has established information and intelligence sharing uh, you know, basically thresholds with those countries, and you can argue, and I would argue, that it has actually improved our security, but that that doesn't mean that there aren't continuing to be gaps and it needs to be strengthened, which is what the House just voted on. I've I've got that companion piece of legislation to deny access into this country uh, with a waived uh, interview to people that come from, have traveled to Syria, to Iraq, that come from other uh, terrorist hotbeds. Ron, again, I have to go back to this, because uh, for the record, the man we heard from, Ed Ramatowski, the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State, sat in front of your committee today, said every process was complete, and this woman got in, and she helped kill 12 Americans. So doesn't it make sense to put the brakes on now or to do something more? I mean, if you've got the guy coming in and saying, well, we we did our jobs, uh, we're covering our derrieres, let's move forward. I mean, I I don't know that the American people are going to be satisfied with that, Ron. J.D., we'll never have perfect information. I mean, that's just the truth. We'll never have perfect information. And if you have an individual that has never crossed with the law, where we don't have information that might have been engaged in in, uh, some of these terrorist camps in some of these different countries, we just don't have the information. So, you know, there are millions of people who come in and travel into the United States. Uh, we, we can't end all that travel either. Well, and that's what I was going to ask you, Senator. What about visitors? 
I know I, we have millions of them coming right. in. And this is exactly, it is one of the, the real harms with terrorism. It can shut down economies. And that's not a good thing either. So I'll keep going to what I consider the root cause of the current situation is, is the fact that ISIS is there. Every day that ISIS is perceived as, or not overtly losing, they're going to be perceived as winning, and they will continue to inspire terrorist acts. They will continue to grow adherence to that barbaric ideology. So that, that's why I am so unsatisfied with President Obama's underreaction. He, he stated his goal to defeat ISIS 15 months ago. 15 months ago, and we still don't have a strategy for actually doing it, primarily because President Obama took off the table probably the one action that is going to be required. We are going to need boots on the ground. Oh, by the way, we already have boots on the ground, just not enough to lead the, the robust effort we need with a committed coalition of the willing. Ron, finally, what, what do you say to Americans who listen to what that man said this morning before your committee and get the feeling that because of the inertia, they're sitting ducks. I, I, I would just say that you have to take a look at the total picture and really take a look at our real vulnerabilities, and let's concentrate on the things we must do, which is defeat ISIS, let's secure our borders, and, yeah, let's tighten up different aspects of some of these programs. But the, the fact of the matter is things like visa waiver, it, it, it is, actually does improve our security. It just does. Over years, the fact we've had the visa waiver program, it has enhanced our intelligence gathering capability and sharing with different countries, and that's a good thing. So I don't want to be throwing out the baby with the bathwater here. Fair enough. Ron Johnson, you have a tough job. These are tough questions. We thank you for your candid response and for working on this problem here uh, on uh, Newsmax Prime. Our thanks